<laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, you know, Wi-Fi is not good, but we're here. <laughs> Well, I mean, as, as, at least as far as you're concerned, you look good on the screen. So I think that's the most important thing. Uh, that's, I look forward to a long conversation with you. Uh, but for today, I know you have a very tight schedule. So we'll keep it short by our standards. But hopefully we'll have a longer one. Now, obviously, when it comes to you, there's so many things that we can talk about. We can talk about Dunsa, uh, you, you know, your life as a writer, as a, as a literature and, and English professor. You might against to Giant Maybe we can talk, talk about that. Uh, a little bit later on, but more masinsin na pagsusuri sa susunod na mga kabanata. But today, I want to start first with, uh, you know, since it's the Pride Month, no, we, we thought that it's perfect to have someone like you. I mean, if, if there's anyone in the Philippines that we should first go to uh, to discuss the Pride Month, perhaps you're the person because uh, you have been at the forefront of the LGBTQ uh, rights movement, not for the past year, not for the past decade, for but for quite some time. Even if, of course, you're very young, I'm I'm, I'm just saying that you're a pioneer. <laughs> I'm not I'm not asking your age on the record. So, Danton, uh, first of all, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your background before we go into um, understanding bakat ka nagfound ng lad lad party list? And, and the evolution of the LGBTQ movement in the Philippines for the uh, purpose of our audience. So, Dante, especially mga medyo mas bata na who are more curious about you. <laughs> yeah, in 1989, I got a British Council grant to study in the UK. So, I chose publishing because publishing was uh, destroyed by the Marcos government uh, during the previous year. So, I went there. And then I saw that, oh, the, the LGBT groups here are open, they're on campus, they're not embarrassed, mm-hmm. they're not ashamed. So I began reading Seller. So that this is, started This is the professor, by, uh, the, 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 of course, the other well-known professor, uh, Cal. Uh, no? uh, it's uh, Comparative Literature at uh, University of the Philippines, the Liman, no, of course, Neil Garcia. Neil Garcia. Yeah, yeah. And then later, when uh, we were talking with Akbayan Parkalis about an LGBT rights bill, so I had a meeting with, I remember them, eh? I had a meeting with the lawyer, one Sila lesbian Percy? and yeah, one yeah. artist. Yeah, yeah group. But Percy was too young. Percy was still in college <laughs> then. Sila ano to, Malumarin, Jack Hernandez, and attorney Venir Cuico. Mm-hmm. So we wrote a draft of the first LGBT rights bill in the Philippines and we gave it to Akbayan because mm-hmm. they were the ones who won in 1998 and they adopted it and filed it. But until now, it's not yet. Uh, passed in the Senate. It has been passed in Congress, I think, three times, but not in the Senate. So, you know, Richard, I was uh, an unwitting uh, LGBT rights spokesperson. I was covering the first LGBT rights march in 1994. There were only 30 people in Quezon City Circle. Mm -hmm. I joined them as a journalist for the Manila Chronicle. Right. I was covering it, and then suddenly Father Mickley, who died last year, said, Oh, Blanto Rimoto will speak now. And I was so shocked because all the TV crew and camera were there. And I I had to speak as a writer of a gay anthology. So in the beginning, you know, Richard, nobody wanted to speak. No? Like Mel and Jay in uh, GMA7, they invited me. And I asked uh, people around, they said, yeah, you should speak because they need someone who's uh, a teacher, you know, who has studied these things and who is generally sober, you know, generally sober and calm. That's, that's, that started my advocacy mm. in 1996. And then in 2003, we started the uh, LADLAD, no, of, uh, for the sole purpose of passing the LGBT rights bill. Which, of course, until now, 30, uh, 20 years later, is not yet passed. No? So I was uh, unwitting because, you know, I, I was a very quiet person. I was mm-hmm. very quiet, always behind the scenes. But uh, you, you know what happened? That when one of my friends, who he tried to kill himself in college, he said that one day, because he was gay and he couldn't accept it, right? Mm-hmm. So one day he was at home with his parents and he saw me on the re- on television talking about LGBT rights. And then he and his father, who didn't communicate before, began talking about mm-hmm. LGBT lives. And he told me, you know what you did in this country? You turned LGBT rights into a discussion for parents 
on the dinner table. So that I think that's the best compliment. So almost because I didn't. Yeah, almost therapeutic. Yeah, because the I, yeah. yeah, because I didn't. You know, when we like you, when you speak in public, you don't know the effect you have on yeah. people, right? Later, only when you get feedback or when people talk to you or email you or bash you, do you know right. the feedback that or the kind of influence that you have. So I continue that by writing gay columns for the past 30 years, books, and then, of course, my novel, River Run. And then later, you know what, Richard, I was even uh, an unpaid. I didn't ask to be paid. Mm -hmm. I was a consultant in several LGBT movies where my input was to make the LGBT films less about gay bars and more about relationships between parents and uh, lovers and friends. So I tried to make it a human issue and not, uh, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with sex, of course, but many of the LGBT films dealt only with commercial sex. So with all these producers, I told them, because we don't always, I mean, we don't go to gay bars every night. I went there in my whole life twice, no? To accompany friends. So we have other lives. We deal with our parents, our families, our friends. So I think my, my work really was to make LGBT life as commonplace and as quote normal as possible. Right. Uh, Danton, um, just a question there. Um, what was the uh, eureka moment that you felt that you have to do something about this, that you cannot just be you know, on the sidelines, that you have to actively take part in advocating for uh, more rights? I mean, did you have a Harvey Milk moment or was there a Harvey Milk before you or are you the Harvey Milk of, of the Philippines? Sorry for, for the Western parallelism. I just, because I mean, for, for us, quote unquote, outsiders, no, I mean, we, we, our understanding is that in the U.S., Harvey Milk played a very important role thanks to Sean Penn in terms of pushing the envelope. Uh, are you like the Harvey Milk of the Philippines? W was that the Eureka moment, you know? I, I, I was, uh, you know, I, I had models before, like, um, well, uh, we were asking, of course, when election time came, because they're always looking for election uh, gay candidates for the elections. I was, we were pushing um, Soxi Tupasho, who was the right. UP educated uh, director, but he didn't want to run for congressman of their district. And we were pushing uh, for Ricky Reyes, I even talked to Ricky, he didn't want. Right. And then my dear friend, Boy Abunda, so these were my, uh, the people I look up to. I Boy said I, he'd run their work for television and maybe later yeah. work in government but not now no because he, he was taking care of his sick mother hmm. and then bernardo bernardo the late director so there were several people who were ahead of me and he wanted them to run for public office or lead the group but they always said that it needs someone as patient <laughs> As patient and as kind as me. Because I know, you know, Richard, we're teachers. No? We're very patient, no? Exactly. We can take a lot of shit from people and then just smile because, you know, that's the way it is, no? You cannot always be, uh, um, you know, you cannot have always be, have an acidic tongue because you would alienate people. So, Eureka moment was one was when um, it was profitable for them. So become ordinary, even in, in Malala Mokaya, even in uh, Mel, in Sioni Mel, no, in GMA, uh, even in Kapuso Mo, mm. Jessica Soho, the show of uh, Rated K, Corina. All these major shows have dealt with the LGBT issues with sympathy and understanding. So it took us, I think, 30 years to be where we are. A full uh, generation, um, no? Where uh, we are treated with more respect mm -hmm. and understanding. Yeah. And you know, the Pride March last Sunday in mm -hmm. Quezon City, Morris Circle, there were 100,000 people mm -hmm. compared to 33 in 1994. So that's the 100,000, but only in Quezon City. But you have to remember the Pride Marches were done in major cities all over the Philippines. There was one in Makati, mm -hmm. in Baguio, etc. I think there were 10 to 15 simultaneous Pride Marches in major cities, maybe with around 200,000 people, no? Last Sunday. Um, uh, Danton, I mean, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question because you're quite a cosmopolitan person, right? Uh, you have traveled around, you're a writer, 
Um, from a comparative perspective, what is your understanding ng kalagayan ng mga LGBTQ plus dito sa Pilipinas? Kumpara dun sa mga ibang kapitbahay natin at oh. ibang bansa. Kasi, just to tell, again, as an outsider, like my understanding is, I, I lived in other parts of Asia and I realized compared sa kanila, maybe not Thailand, right? Uh, medyo mas bukas yeah. tayo sa LGBTQ community, not on the political yeah. legal level, but on the social, cultural, everyday anthropology level. Uh, uh, was there was that the kind of gap you saw that has to be bridged, or maybe maybe I, we us outsiders are not appreciating actually many microaggressions that you people were uh, that your folks the LGBTQ folks were were, were suffering from? Because from the outside, ang tingin namin actually ang Philippines quite tolerant kompara dun sa marami kapit bayan. Again, I can only think of Thailand for instance as a relatively more open country, but even that's yeah. arguable, right? Can you tell me your as a cosmopolitan writer, thinker, educator, what is your understanding of nung kalagayan ng ating LGBTQ community sa Pilipinas? I can I can tell you a very very brief story. Like twenty years ago, I was in Malaysia and then later in Thailand. I got an Asian scholarship right. grant for two years to study Asian literature. So in Malaysia, I met uh, it's still there, no, a Pink Alliance group. And we had a meeting and they said, oh, one day they said, we Malaysians, we want to form and edit a gay anthology. Like you in the Philippines, this was 2003. Mm. Do you have gay anthology, one gay anthology? I happened to be carrying the like five of the gay books I did. <laughs> yes. So I showed it to them that led one, two, and three. Their eyes were like popping yeah. out of their sockets, no? Sabi na, oh my God. So I gave them the books, no? And then in Singapore, uh, I met some teachers. This was 2004. I met them. But you know what happened? But things have changed in Singapore now. We're talking about the year 2004. We met. And then the next day, I got an email mm -hmm. uh, from a government agency telling me, Professor, Motto, please refrain from talking to Singaporeans about political issues mm. because this violates your professional visa. So I was shocked, Richard, mm. who among those four, five gay men I talked to was a spy for the government. Grabe, no? But now, to their credit, Singapore just passed. Uh, I was reading about it last year. Or a uh, English era kind of discrimination. Remove. Yeah, yeah. 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 They remove now gay men can have sex without going to jail because it was a British era law. Yeah. Now they can do, of course, behind in the privacy of their rooms, no, or houses. They can have sex, but not women. So times have changed, no. Uh, in in Thailand, of, of course, Thailand is different because their culture is not as yeah. forbidding as ours. So we're not bad, no, but. Uh, Again, that's how I explained it to the comic, like when in 2010, they mm -hmm. didn't want us to run because you know what they said, like you, Danton, I mean, you're a teacher in Ateneo and Ricky Reyes is rich and Boya Bunda is rich. And, and they get marginalized. Uh, dear, yeah, dear commissioners, this, we are the exceptions to the rule, no? as mm -hmm. I said earlier. If you go around the country, uh, there are more poor gay people. And they can only be working in the beauty parlors if they're a gay man, or they can be working only as bus conductors or security guards if they're women, because they cannot do other work that that's not quote unquote appropriate for their sexual orientation. So I was running, I said Landad was running on a platform of livelihood and then greater opportunities because even in Quezon we had a case no we went to court there was one transgender who was raped it was it wasn't successful so it became sexual assault one counselor mashed her breast and wanted to have sex with her so she she and the waiters no fought mm -hmm. him off we filed the case we won no administratively he was suspended for 6 months without pay but criminally we, he could not be sued because the criminal courts the criminal law say one man cannot sexually assault another mm. man. So Viru Vikreya, even if she's transgender, no, she had underwent sexual reassignment surgery, she was still considered a man. So we, we had a lot of cases in the last 25 years. We generally won, no, Richard. But um, at the end of the day, there were still barriers we could not cross, no, or as they mm. say, pink ceiling, no. That's why the struggle continues until now, twenty twenty three. Um, uh, uh, Professor Ramoto, are, 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 I mean, I, I'm reading a book about by John Seidel. It's about the revolutions in Southeast Asia, and, and sinisabi niya. Now, one of the challenges during the Illustrated time was how to create 
you know, a kind of a breach between the bourgeoisie, cosmopolitan, illustrado class, and then on the other hand, yung masa, no? So depending on whom binabasa mo, pag sila ileto, binasa mo, sabi niya, no, 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 no. revolution ay talaga Bonifacio, <laughs> the whole Agoncillo line. And then the more Benedict Anderson line, etc., looks at the role of the, of the cosmopolitan. But this book is fantastic because it looks at how the two came together because of broader development in the international system, you know, the awakening of revolutionary movements, national movements around the world. I was just thinking if the same framework can also apply na, syempre ikaw, I mean, you're, you're part of the elite. I mean, I don't know if you can, I can say illustrados of the LGBTQ movement, but you are absolutely correct when you say kailangan din ang grassroots movement and, and to breach them. But my sense is yeah. globally also, there is a move towards greater recognition of the rights, including the Supreme Court case in the U.S., of course, uh, towards the end of the Obama era that affirmed the sex, uh, sex union. How are these three connected or are they coming together based on sa pag-intindin mo over three decades of, of, of advocacy? You know, Richard, my name is now in the law books because uh, when mm. the Commission on Elections didn't want us to run. I went to court, no? I went to yeah. court. And it's so funny, I cannot name names. No? It's so funny because uh, even Malacanang lawyers wanted to... <laughs> my friends, in, these young lawyers in Malacanang, Danton, you want to join your case, we'll defend you, but don't put our names. No, we will... I mean, everybody rallied, no? The Jesuits were yeah. with me and the Malacanang lawyers, the Al Akbayan lawyers, the Bayan Muna, even the military... I grew up in the military, Richard. So military lawyers wanted to yes, help me we can talk behind to, yeah. the scene. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, I and then, of course, the left, no? So I said, oh, my God, what, what happened here? Why, why am I uniting all these forces? Mm. <laughs> so I sat down and with the lawyers and we filed a case. I, I did the final editing of the of the brief in the Supreme Court and we won. We were allowed to run but only one month before the elections. But that was important because that was the first legal victory we had. And it showed and as Casa Tour said and Tita Eta was telling me mm -hmm. Danton, only you could unite us in one table. <laughs> I said, because you're my personal friends, you have to help me. We don't have a lot, we don't have a lot of money, right? Mm. And then even, of course, I told you, even the and the Catholic Church, Richard, I cannot name names, but where did they when you were allowed to run twice, where did I put the campaign materials? You know, one of the storerooms was the, some of the storerooms were the were the offices of the of the churches, no? Mm. The parish priest told mm -hmm. me, oh, you can keep your campaign materials here and then you can get your, tell your staff to get the campaign, the tarpaulin and campaign materials. It's all right, Danto. Now, the doctrine is saying that, but we are supporting you behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's always behind the scenes, Richard. So that's good, no? I informal, think, informal. I think it took us, yeah, 20 years. Maybe because of, as you said, my... You know, I, I admit, no, because I went to school in Ateneo, of course, and then I mm. grew up in the military. I have so many friends up there, no. But but uh, I never used any of them. But they were always willing to help. And then the Catholic Church, you know, I have I met many nor many priests and nuns and bishop, mm -hmm. even Archbishop Cruz. One time, Oscar Cruz was telling me he embraced me and told me, you know, Danton. One day, all the things you're fighting for, in God's good grace, he will give it to you. I mean, this Archbishop Oscar mm. Cruz not telling me But that, that you had no less than the Pope, right? I mean, it, you had no less than Pope Francis saying during, his, this is after yeah. trip to Brazil, right? Where he said, who am I to judge, yeah. right? That ultimately, it's up to, to the Almighty to decide on, you know, who's worthy of his love and yeah. acceptance. Yeah. That's why I was, yeah. I was so shocked because, of course, that guy is a Jesuit, no? So you know how they are. <laughs> so I was happily shocked. But when he said that, did you see the backlash in the Philippines? Even the, even not all, a few people in the Catholic Church. Oh, you mean Church the, the Pope Francis? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Pope Francis, yeah. So I, I, can you imagine? I had to defend the Pope. <laughs> yeah, I remember the pro Ratzinger people. No, I'm not... Yeah, I mean, there are people who will cite Ratzinger, right, the previous pope, no, to 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 kind of counter. I remember yeah. that very well. So suddenly there was a situation, all of us were debating, were joining the Catholic debates. I mean, that was 
That was, I mean, this is 2015, yeah. 16, mga ganun, di ba? Yeah. yeah. And they were saying pa that the Pope that was uh, badly translated. And so I had to write a column. And Daniel Davis said New York Times was wrong in translation. Mm. So I had to write a column and explain to them that 20 years ago, I was an intern in the New York Times. I was a fact checker. Mm. Our job as fact checkers was to check the facts against two or three books. no? Yes. And then beha- beside me were the Spanish translators and Richard. Yeah, they're PhDs. I mean, you know, they're PhDs in Spanish literature and everything, and I have a PhD in English. So we're double-checking and fact-checking. I said, New York Times cannot be wrong because its fact-checkers mm-hmm. were like three layers, no? So it cannot be wrong translation. And then they shut up, no, because uh, when I said... I had the personal experience. You please don't, uh, please don't create lies, no, and fake news against the Pope. Let us talk about the issues. No? So I think that died down later. Mm. No, you know how in the Philippines, after a week, the news cycle changes. No, right, right. Um, going back to this issue, uh, Dandan, can you give us an uh, idea of? What do you think are the kind of a critical junctures? I mean, for instance, if you look at the civil rights movement in the U.S., no, uh, you know, Montgomery assassination of JFK. I mean, God forbid. I mean, but I mean, uh, what are the just to? I mean, wag muna tayo too much scholars. I'm sure there's going to be a book analysis of that. There already. But yeah. Your first, any mga critical yeah. junctures dito sa 30 years arc of advocacy that you're talking about? You know, the critical junctures, we can talk about political in the Philippines. Um, uh, unfortunately, we were lobbying with the late President Noy Noy, who was my schoolmate, but it was so difficult. It was easier, so I'll, this will be controversial, but I'll say this anyway, Richard. Since your show naman is controversial. <laughs> I am controversial, as someone said, president. so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know that, no? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said yes to you, no? I only say yes to a few interviewers now, no? Ikaw kasi, ibang, ibang bibig mo. <laughs> well, a teacher to teacher, so right? President teacher Duterte, to teacher, yeah. <laughs> so, in all honesty, President Duterte, no? President Duterte, through yes. Pantaleon, Congressman Alvarez, he was a guest in my show. Early on during the term of President Duterte, I was so shocked. <laughs> Because he was on a national national radio and television live when he said, "Alam mo danto, ano uto sa akin ni presidente, di ba? She was the one of the higher ups in the Congress. Ay ipasa na yung bill niyo. Gusto nga ni presidente magpakasal na kayo." So I told uh, Congressman Alvarez, "Thank you, sir, but I think let's start with the rights first, no? The yeah. because if you talk about marriage, we'll go against the Catholic Church, and we don't want to do that." He eh, said, "Okay, din yan, kasi kami naman talaga binabangga namin ng Catholic Church, no? That was, you know, Congressman Alvarez and mm. President Duterte. So that's one watershed moment, not yeah. because I'm pro Duterte or anti. But, I'm just but, telling but, you that. But that, that's, that's, that was the, the thing, right?" That was the weird thing, no? Na parang huh? na Duterte had both a Trump side and a Bernie Sanders side. I mean, if I could put it that way, now. But that, I mean, how true it is? Ang um, kasi I've, I've been in Davao, no? And they told me actually, sa Davao, yung policies ni yeah. ni Digong at even Sarah were yeah. LGBTQ friendly. At least yeah, yeah. compared to sa ibang LG. Yeah. Can you can you is that is that true? Is that fake news? What's going on there? And I'll how do you feel about to it? You. Everything in the Philippines, yeah, you're right. No, everything in the Philippines, Richard, is personal. You know mm. why? Some of President Duterte's and Sarah's closest, you know, closest. Let's let's make it. Uh, some of the people they work with, no, in in the, in the city hall and everything. I know some of them. No, they're gay. No, mm. so they had a lot of gay employees, trusted ones, and uh, I see. They they really open up no spaces for LGBT yeah. discourse in Davao, no? Like there's a uh, there's there's an ordinance in Davao, it's anti discrimination, no? You right. cannot discriminate against LGBTs in Davao in the workplace and in the school so you'll go to jail. It's a law in the city of Davao, no? Mm. Along with maybe now 30 other cities in the country. So our strategy was to again it's very Marxist to surround the country with cities and towns that have pro-LGBT laws and ordinances because the national lawmakers in Congress and the Senate have not done it. So we have around 30 cities and towns now 
Quezon City, Manila, Olongapo, Baguio, Ligaspi, General Santos, Davao, mm-hmm. Zamboanga, Cebu, no? where LGBTs can live and work freely. So that's our second, uh, uh, you can call it milestone. And third is what, you know, what media has done, either it's media or social media. And you know, both of us are with media. That's why right. and I think it's also good that I was I've been here for like 30 years with various right. newspapers. They are, you know, it's like a mafia. We're kind to each other. <laughs> like when they're attacking you, I was supporting you, no? I mean, you know, and I'm sure you when people were attacking me, other of friends. Of course, of course, yeah. The Solidarity. Yeah. In the editing tables. Ganun eh, yeah. That's, that's why they say, say nga, Philippine media is a mafia. I think it's a good mafia naman because you try to help each other. So Kawawa media... Kawawa tayo eh. Bugbug na, bugbug na tayo eh. <laughs> Kaya hindi na ako lumalabas in public. Oppressed mafia. Lugar, no? I really choose my interviews. That's why uh, social media and media, I think, have helped convey the message to the rest of the Filipinos that uh, it's time for change, no? For... Uh, so that that's what President Duterte did, and now uh, we we don't know we're watching uh, President Marcos Jr. Although I mean Senator I mean on several occasions has voice support, no, and of course the other people in the Senate, no Senator Risa, Jesus Scudero, Coco Pimentel, no, right. these are our supporters in the Senate, no. Uh, I think five of them, no. Right. So we have. The, you know, the only ones against our, us now are the father and son team of Joel. And Joel is a personal friend of mine of like many, many years, no? So when Joel says in public, I have many gay personal friends, I'm sure he's talking about me, no? <laughs> but I tell him, but Joel, you're a lawmaker. You're a lawmaker. No? Please don't use the Bible as a source of your law because and not everyone is a Christian in the Philippines. There are small but noisy minority led by the father mm. and son team. Alam mo sa ano, when you, when you do a body count in Congress, when you count them in Congress in the Senate, we have more supporters than oppositioners, mm-hmm. oppositionists. Pero organized minor- minority, team. you're saying that they're organized minority. Is, is there kind of like a double movement na as the LGBTQ movement gain momentum, para may backlash or my counter mobilization in that sense especially with the rise of certain religious groups politically no kasi catholic church medyo nagwi-withdraw na sa political ano eh. i mean the influence of catholic yeah. church is not there anymore like before but there are many alternative religious groups who are very very influential politically and electorally right do you think that that has also to do with the backlash or counter mobilization is there kind of a double movement two step forward one step back it's just kind of, the ano yeah. Yeah, it's just the fundamentalist churches because the Aglipayans are with us. The Election of Christo hasn't spoken against us. No? It's always very careful, the INC. And then, of course, the the other Protestant churches are supporting us. No, And uh, yung sa Islam, they've talked to me. You know, the Datus have talked to me. I know many datos. They've talked to me privately. They've told me support you, but you know our religion. And I said yes, that I understand because I studied Islam for two years. It's okay, you no, know, if you cannot support us, but please do not, uh, do not antagonize. They said no, no, no. We will not uh, demonize or antagonize. Mm. So if you go to Mindanao, there are only very few instances of gay men being harassed because even the leaders and the datos, because they have gay relatives. So everyone has mm-hmm. a gay relative, no? So it's in the Philippines, I said earlier, This is more, the personal becoming political, no? Personal. personal yeah, political, like, yeah. you know, you know, Richard, when um, Sonny Trillanes was in the Senate, these are Bicolanos, I'm from Bicol. Sonny Trillanes, Laila de Lima, lahat siya, no? Gringo Hunasan, yung mga macho na yan, I talked to them and they were winning to support the gay rights bill because of me as a fellow Bicolano. So when you talk to these lawmakers on a personal basis, it's not difficult. It's not difficult to pass an LGBT rights bill. Unfortunately, si Risa nga nahihirapan kasi konti lang sila. And then Joel is so noisy and the dad, si Joel pa walk out, walk out pa, so dramatic, no? Mm. And the dad is also very noisy and Congressman Abante, but konti lang talaga sila, no? Mm. I, I think if you do a survey now, we're not talking about 
uh, marriage, no? If you're talking about the LGBT rights bill, the SOGI bill, maybe it's 60-40 now, no? 60 for it and 40 against it. It has moved. The needle has moved, no? Um, Danton, what is the SOGI bill all about for those who are not very familiar? Because unfortunately, it's kind of mimify na siya, no? Like, uh, you could see in popular yeah. discussion, oh, it's SOGI yan. I, like, it became a byword for folks from the... But what is the SOGI bill all about? This is about equal rights, equal recognition before the Constitution, right? And what are the roots of this proposed na batas? Na yan? What are the jurisprudential uh, yeah. uh, precedents, etc.? Yeah. The, ro- the roots of that are, are, are simply put, the roots of that are really, we, we, we have an anti-discrimination bill, no discrimination in the workplace and in the schools, getting of license, practice, practicing a profession. Yan yung ginawa namin noong 1998 that was filed by Akbayan mm-hmm. and of course my version of Bayan Muna and then Senator Grace Po. Senator Miriam was our staunch defender and Senator Raul Rocco, lahat yan kampi sa amin. No? And through the years, in the last 20 years, especially in the West, it has widened. No? So when you say, no, because when you say anti-discrimination bill, for lesbians and gays, isipin ng tao, yung lesbian, ah, siya yung ano, bus conductor, conductor sa bus, okay, security guard. But there are lesbians who are, as we say, lipstick lesbians, no? mm. straight looking. And there are lesbians who are old, no? And there are lesbians who are indigenous people, no? So nilawa ka nila yung... Spectrum talaga yan, spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're now looking at the in the links, no interlinks, no. Right. Hindi lang dapat, hindi lang lesbian, kasi meron ding gay, no. Meron ding gay na hindi naman lahat kamukha ni Tita Ricky Reyes, no. Meron din mga macho, merong matatanda, merong straight acting, no. So yung the so- sexual orientation and gender identity, it means that lahat ng nasa spectrum kay straight acting, kay may asawang lesbian, may asawang gay, indigenous people matanda, lahat yan covered. It's a bit deep. For me personally, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Richard, it's a bit difficult to right. pass because it's so broad. Kaya nga ako, I was pushing for the first anti-discrimination bills sa workplace, sa schools, getting of licenses. Because we talk na to the congressmen and senators like five to ten years ago, payag na sila. Even dito Soto, Payan siya sa ganon. Tito Soto is so anti-SOG. No? But he said, he told me, dahil to, kung trabaho, bibigay namin. Pero masyado naman itong malawak. Parang nag-intercut na siya. At saka masyadong Western, I see. Mm. He said, no? So, uh, I was telling uh, the proponents, if he can go back to the drawing table and uh, maybe file a simpler bill that will not antagonize, like baby steps, baka we can make it. But we're not in power, no? So Ladla did not win, no? If Ladla won, he would have filed a uh, a less comprehensive, but I think more doable bill because we've talked to the congressmen and the senators. Payag sila pag employer, pag employment, pag yeah. trabaho, pag pag-aaral, pag licensia, kunyari, doctora, doctor, businessman. The basics first. No? Yeah, yeah. Can you enumerate but, uh, that? What, what are the like core elements of the SOGI bill? Uh, I mean, are we talking as far as same-sex union, for instance? Or... No. No, no, no. no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Me, uh, same-sex union or marriage equality is not part of mm. the SOGI bill. No? Wala yan sa aming pinag- I, told, I told Joel wala yan, but he said later na ipofile namin yan. I told Joel. Yeah, yeah, kasi equal protection, protection school, before no? constitution, parang yun yung argument sa US, di ba? Na parang... Yeah. That's why I'm wondering. So we, we told na, yeah. sabi nga nila, why are we protecting the LGBT? It's because they're marginalized. No? The law gives equal protection to everyone. Sabi nila, but if you protect the LGBT, paano na yung majority? No, the majority is already protected. The heterosexual majority. Kaya natin tinataas kasi hindi sila protected. So we're just giving equal rights to everyone. No, Hindi siya... We're not giving special rights to anyone. Walang, walang spe- At saka walang marriage. Kung magpapakasal man sila, sabi ko nang ganyan, magpapakasal sila sa West, no? Hindi sila pwede magpakasal sa simbahan kasi against yung Catholic yeah, Church, yeah. no? Against yung ibang Civil religion. Union. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's called domestic part. It's a different mm-hmm. law, domestic partnership law. Wala pa rin tayong ganyan dito, no? Uh, so medyo minimalist so, ang SOGI bill. Uh, you're saying it's actually minimalist as it is because it doesn't cover... 
same sex union civil union among people of uh, uh, because because uh, ako, we're not going to win if we uh, mm. even if you look at the surveys until last year uh, the LGBT groups won't win and the SOGI bill will never pass if there is a uh, marriage equality provision. No? Right. Sa totoo lang, sabi nga lang, kami nga LGBT sa Philippines, ano pa nga kami eh, politically behave, no? we're not moderate for the yeah, world. Yeah. Moderate, moderate because we know the Catholic Church is very strong and uh, we just want basic no, rights to live, to work, mm-hmm. to, uh, to get, have a license, to be able to study. Yun lang hiningi namin, no? as of now. Wala, namang, wala, wala pa mga kasal, no? Wala. It's so far away, no? mm-hmm. so far off. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Danton, later on, I want to talk about the Lad Lad party list and what are the plans, what is the dynamics ahead. But before that, there are two things that we discussed. One is the influence of the West, and, and the second one is moderate, so I assume there are more radical elements. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because uh, I, I heard with other movements, I mean, even populist movements, no, kung my, my Duterte, my Trump, you know what I'm saying? So is there also that dynamic whereby the LGBTQ movement in America and in the West is, is in your opinion, influencing or some would say excessively influencing its counterparts here? And then how that's feeding into the supposed moderate versus radical kind of dynamics? Because all civil rights movements have always a kind of a Malcolm X to a, you know, uh, Dr. King kind of dynamics, right? Uh, I, I'm just trying to explain this, you know, for a much more uh, broader audience. Can you give me your analysis yeah, um, of that? Yeah. Like, like you know, are you, you know, coming under right. attack by some as being not radical enough, as being, I don't know, sell off yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I can answer you by, re- by talking about, in 1998, I went to a world, world conference on LGBT rights in Amsterdam. And the conference, there were only two people, two groups of people talking, the British and the Americans. So I stood up and then the delegation from India, the leaders stood up and then we, we of course, me in my, you know, my usual diplomatic, gentle and nice way, I said that with all due respect, no, I think we have to hear the voices of non-American and non-British here because there are different ways of struggle right. in the LGBT. Can, can we hear from the Indians and from the Filipinos? Because all of you have been talking for 30 minutes and you've been debating, but what is the better? No, there's no better way because what ha- what's happening to your country is not completely applicable to us, no? I said in the Philippines, so I spoke for like five minutes. In the Philippines, we have the, the class context. So I'm speaking as an educated person from a Jesuit university who went to school in the U.S. and in the U.K. Yes. But there are many, many other LGBTs in the Philippines who cannot find jobs or practice their profession because they are LGBTs. No? So they're just the class component. And 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 uh, and you're right because I um, I'm 60 years old now. No? That's my real age, although of course I know I look young. I'm 60 years old and uh, I keep on telling the young people that um, if we can only like I'm telling them, look, now you can hold hands in public and have yeah. parties and everything. 30 years ago, we could not even do that, no? We could not even do that. So what I'm saying is now appreciate, we're on appreciate that glass the radio, school, yeah. in the cinema, in mm. books, no? We have a lot of supporters now in politics and everything. But we have to choose our political battles. We cannot win if you propose a bill with marriage equality. Later, I said later, if we pass the SOGI bill or the anti-discrimination bill, maybe later, we can ask for a marriage equality bill in the courts, no domestic partnership. Yung sa West, no? Maybe later, but not now. No, let's look. You know, let's, I keep on telling them, look at the big picture. What mm-hmm. we have now is we didn't have 30 years ago. So, kayong mga bata, I keep on telling them, masaya naman kasi yung, ano, yung LGBT pride mars, but and this again controversial. What I just noticed in the last Pride marches is less political, Richard. No, they keep on selling these nice things, no, mm. the banner and the button and the cap and the shirt. But there's no discussion in depth about the issues. There's no discourse. There's no political discussion. That's why I um, I just attended, but I missed the days 20 years ago when there was discussion. 
in-depth no discussion. You mean nagiging apolitical on, yung movement? On the issues. You, you think you say you saying the movement? It has become like in the West, no very. It's very commercial because it's mm. fashionable now, Richard. Yeah. It's fashionable to wear bright shoes, rainbow-colored shirt, rainbow-colored socks, and everything. But I don't know if they're aware of the need to pass the law. There's a need to pass the SOGI mm. bill. There's a need to pass the anti-discrimination law or bill because there are still people outside Metro Manila who have difficulty finding work, landing a job, exercising their profession, kasi bakla sila o lesbiana. Mm-hmm. So tayong sa Metro Manila, we're like in a cocoon, no? We're comfortable here. It's very, as you say, cosmopolitan here. Mm-hmm. But outside, even just tumawid ka lang ng Batangas, o sa Mindoro na lang, no? Mm-hmm. O Romblon, pagtawid mo ng, uh, o pagtawid mo ng Quezon sa Bicol, no? Iba na ang timpla dyan. Mm. O pagtawid mo ng Pangaan at Baguio. Pagtawid mo ng Baguio sa Norte, iba na dyan, no? Uh, so you're so saying there's a class the divide, there's an urban-rural divide. You're saying there's a, there's a serious enough divide that has to be at the center of discussion. As much as you want to celebrate, you know, the capitalism of, you know what I'm saying, I mean, Nike shoes, their special shoes with the rainbow, yeah. Apple products, I mean, Tim Cook himself is very strong on that. Yeah. But you're saying, you know, hey, basics... 20 now, years yeah. ago, yeah. because 20 years ago, I was organizing the Pride Marches. I was the lead convener. You know what I did, Richard? I in, I, I invited the left. Nagalit ni Akbayan sa akin. So I told them, look, you're not the only ones who should be here. So I invited Bayan Muna, mm. Anak Pawis, et cetera, no? the Gabriela Group. I opened it up. no. And of course, yeah. the Social Democrats casting it. No, no. I said, you you cannot be the only one here. We have Coalition to include building. everyone yeah. on this table, the indigenous people. Eh kasi ro, yung mga IP komunista naman, ah, wala akong pakialam, bakla yan. So they should mm. be here. no. So I was the first to invite them and telling you, no? I remember those debates. When was this again? Like Sorry, when was this? World, no? 2010s ba to? When is this again? 20 years ago. 20 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. To, uh, in the year 2000, 20 years, 20 yeah, yeah, yeah. years ago. Because yeah, I was, grabe 20 pa yung years ago, nun. I was convening the LGBT Pride Marches with, with several people. Ano yan? Talagang magkakaaway sila, yung mga, the left and its uh, different yeah. birth permutation. Sabi ko, wala akong pakialam sa away ninyo. Pagpakla, yeah. papuntahin natin dito kay Lesbiana, kay Akbayan pa yan, Coalition. o Bayan Muna, yeah. o whatever. Gabriel, I want them here. O yun. Uh, Nakikinig a... sila kasi because it's me, but now I don't yeah. think there's, there are discussions like that. Yeah. Uh... I want to ask another question before we go towards the end of our, our, our podcast. Of course, hopefully this is just the beginning of a long set of conversations. But that I want to ask, what about yeah. these discussions about, again, sorry for being ignoramus about this, but there are also discussions about discrimination within the community. I mean, you are, uh, you're the G part of LGBTQ, but there are concerns that there are other elements, maybe the T part of it, who are not getting as much recognition or support from other groups. I saw that actually over Twitter, some of our friends from the community are saying that, hey, we have to also watch out for intra-LGBT kind of tensions, and some would even say discrimination. What do you have to tell about it? Because so far, it's the G part, which has been quite spurheading, no? But but uh, how are the others doing, especially the T, the plus, the other elements of the community? You have to remember when I founded Landlad Party List 20 years ago, it was LGBT. In the U.S., if you look at the spectrum, only gay people had... There was there were gay parties, period. Yeah. Lesbian groups, period. Transgender. But in the Philippines, I brought everyone in. Yeah. And in the in in Ladlad before, even SAS was part of Ladlad before. They formed uh, their elder. They they formed their transgender groups uh, from our group. No, they, they formed uh, their SAS assault and the other transgenders they came from Ladlad no so we gave them space no i tried to in- involve everyone yeah. include everyone which was not done in the west but on a practical level and i'm being very honest with you uh it's difficult when election campaign comes no mm. because the transgenders would quarrel among themselves they would think it's like a beauty contest you know 
you know, the ego and the vanity would come in. Yeah, and the lesbians would... During the campaign, away-away sila, Richard. I would be there. I was. I said, why am I putting out fires? I should be campaigning for Ladlad. Yung away ninyo, ako ang nagsusulba, nagsusog ng mga away ninyo. And they would listen mm. to me because maybe mm. because I'm old, no? Mm. And I'm their leader. So it's so tiring for me to mount a campaign when you have people... Like some of them, no, I'm sorry, no. Some of the less lesbian leaders are ex-girlfriends of each other. The past ten years, they still hate each other, Richard. Mm. They still want to stab each other mm. or pull each other's out eyes out of their sockets. Ano ba naman? Paano naman tayo mananalo yung mga leader na kaaway away See, mm. so it's difficult. But now, lad, lad, there's a new set of leaders. I'm just the Emeritus Chairman, President, the new set of leaders are mostly gay. Mm. So I told them, open it up, please open it up to lesbians. Pero transgender, so we're inviting the lesbians. But lesbians kasi, Richard, they have their own groups now. Eh. But the lesbians, and they know this, I've always encouraged them. I've joined the lesbian meetings. I've joined transgender meetings. Alam mo, Richard, sumali pa ako sa transgender meeting. At one mm. point, they were going around mm. the room telling each other, what what pills are they taking? Siyempre, wala naman akong pills kasi hindi man ako transgender. Mm. O kung magpapo-opera na sila. And I was just watching them and listening because I wanted to learn. I attended many lesbian meetings and mm. transgender meetings because I wanted to be the kind of leader who would understand as many concerns as possible. Pero ngayon, yung lad-lad is being run by younger people. I just told them, mm-hmm. you open it up. Le- yung lesbians daw kasi may sarili ng groups eh. And that's good, no? I mm. hope they run also, uh, lesbian party list. Yung transgender, uh, meron kami transgenders, no? Bisexuals, meron din kami bisexuals. Mm. Yung mga lesbians, uh, we're having difficulty right. getting uh, them because is, the ones who are yeah. with us work for the government. Mm. I, I mean, I, I see the whole they, point. They cannot run. They yeah. Sorry for for cutting. I I see the whole unity in diversity kind of argument, but but obviously threshold eh. Kung organized kaya, there's there's power in number, no? I mean, and kung watak watak, baka it doesn't meet the threshold to create the kind of political impact you're looking for. Is that your reading of the situation? And 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 my because yeah. my concern, Danton, is um, I mean, you're Danton Ramoto, you're you're the you're you're one of the pioneers and all, but but how do we make sh- how do you make sure na there's no vacuum of leadership. I mean, the, I mean, I'm sure you're gonna live for the next hundred years. But what's gonna happen after the next hundred years? How do you make yeah. sure that my my no, actually, that's yeah. why I'm in charge. There's a new group. I'm so happy. There are so many groups, and there's a lot that's a new set of leaders. As I told you, they have an election. I did not run for election, no, because I wanted the new generation of leaders, mm. and th- th- we have them. I'm just telling them that we have. Two, again, this is just me. Number one, we have to include the poor. As many lower mm. classes and poor as possible. Right. Number two, we have to talk to the politicians. They always tell me, why do I talk to politicians? Because they're the ones running the show in this country. I've never accepted money from the politicians, but I've negotiated and talked and discussed with them. So I said, if you're going to run in 2025, you have to begin talking to as many political forces as possible early in the game because it's now 2023. And you have to talk to the poor. Ang dami-daming mahirap, yan pa rin magpapanalo sa atin. Marami sila. Uh, last, Danton, are, are you open to to throw your hat into the ring again? Because my sense is, iba pa rin if, if a Danton remote is running for office, right? I mean, that's the sense I get. Right? Yeah, I mean, Remember you I can have a protege you with you. I mean, you don't uh, have to be alone, right? You can have a protege. Who knows? You guys might win two or three representatives on the party list level, yeah. if not national level. Yeah, I, 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 I told, I told you in the meeting that uh, there, there's a new set of officers, and there's there are funders, no? There are funders. Uh, actually, the funders I know them personally, but I told the funders, oh, you talk to Ladla, the new officers, yeah. because I'm not running, so they had the series of meetings, and the new officers. Even these are officers around the country or national officers. They talked to me. They said, sir, 
the founder said they will not uh, you know they will not help us if you're not running mm. <laughs> so paano lang I said ha kasi you're a brand okay. yourself eh. you're a brand yourself eh. yeah and then and because because we're for, for party this way the funding is 60 million so we're talking of people like maybe 10 or 20 people who will give us 60 million and they said they want to make sure that mm-hmm. the one who will hold the money will not steal it. They can trust. Yeah, trust is everything. Yeah, yeah you're because right. me before if we've run twice, I I kept all the receipts, Richard. Yung bahay ko daming resibo eh. And I told the funders, do you want me to give you copies of the receipts to show you? No, Danto, if it's you, yeah, we they don't trust need the you. receipt. It's the trust. Yeah, factor. we don't need the receipt. So I I just keep on telling them that let's talk to the funders and tell them this is a collective party list. Names are not important. And uh, But as I said, if if uh, I have to make a choice, and, and uh, I mean, if, if the, because the founders are important, Richard, you know yeah, that. I mean, exactly. the Realist, realistic. We're topic, not yeah. going uh-huh. to win. Uh-huh. We need 60 uh-huh. million. If they will say the 60 million will be released if I run, then I think I have to run, no? That's why I have you on this show. That's why I have you on this show, Danton. I wanted you to say that. I wanted you to say that. Sorry. But you fell for the trap. If you if you can look at my face again when I said I have to run, I was like so sad. But I have to run. No, no, I, you're reluctant. I can see that. Because I don't want to run. I just want to write my books, Richard. Uh, but Danton, you know that. I mean, that's what good leaders, usually the best leaders are the reluctant leaders who step up to the plate once the moment comes. Wag so... sana reluctant it's once you're in the office, ah. Huh? Wag ka na reluctant. No, it's like this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know me, no? if I say yes, I'm really, I really campaign hard. No? Yeah. But uh, that's why I talked <laughs> I talk to the founders again last week. No, ayaw namin kasi danto. Laki-laki ng pera, no? Yeah. I mean, for them, it's not. That's only 1.5 million US dollars. But still, but for me, it's trust. Of money. But they said, we 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 want you because... Mm. And I said, why? Because, they, of course, they want help with their businesses, later regulation of the law. Lobbying. Lobbying. I'm sure yeah, you lobbying, can do the job of 100 you know, congressmen. I think you're such you a good know. politico, yeah? <laughs> And they told me, ikaw pa naman kasi mabait ka, yes. mo naman lahat, ka exactly. You can yeah, bring everyone you know, together. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> you know how exactly. it is, Richard. No? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of it's course. hard, no? But if of I course. have no choice, I told you earlier. Yeah, yeah. I even told you, remember, that I consult with you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, Danton, I mean, if this is a platform, I mean, we had people who declared, I think Jano Gibbs said here that he might run for president down the road. I mean, like... So, Ikaw naman, interview lang tayo, <laughs> Yeah, but but I think, Danton, this is an interview as time has come. My goodness, one hour passed like a breeze. I know you have a show coming up soon. So yeah. I hope we can have you in studio soon for my other podcast yeah. project. I'll, I'll message you tomorrow. Yes, please. I'm, get, I'm getting a driver yeah, to yeah. go there. Because, Danton, uh, we know. need you because we want to talk about Chris Aquino. We want to talk about Robin Padilla. Oh, yeah. We want to talk about your oh, students. You can tell us. You can tell us. We want to talk yeah, about let's get, your I'll books. You after your wonderful show. books. Yes. Yeah. Danton, please bring I'll a copy of your you. book. huh? Pairam ng coffee book. Uh, I would love to. to I'll give you a copy. It. Please, please. I'll yeah. give you a copy. Yes. Thank you so much. You know, Richard, you asked difficult questions, but I answered you honestly. Uh. I mean, wala akong... Kasi nung halingan Danton, sinabi I have no yung... notes, nothing. This is all from my heart. You see, I have no scripts, nothing. <laughs> even I'm... even the admission that I have to run, it was said with so much sadness. If you can go back to the video, you can see, oh, I have no choice but to let's run. Go! Danton, let's go! Let's go! You can do <laughs> this! Kailangan ka! Oh. Yeah. Danto Remoto! We'll yeah. Para we'll sa bayan! Para sa bayan! Oh, we'll, have a... <laughs> we'll have another interview. I have to go because my show... Maraming salam, Danto. I, I owe you also. So I, I need to be on your show. Let's discuss geopolitics and hopefully we can yeah. have you in studio. I, I can see the audience are super happy on YouTube, on fr- Facebook. They're super happy. They're... I think a lot of people are elated to hear your reluctant para sa bayan moment. Ay, ako, <laughs> ayoko naman. Richard. I just want to, you know me, I just want to... I know, to, I, I, but that's why I, I respect you, Danton. Hindi nga ako lumalabas ng bahay. Danton, that's, that's why I respect you. That's why I respect you. Ipapainterview na ako sa TV5 kasi yeah. istasyon natin. <laughs> exactly, mga kapatid. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Anton. Thank you. I'll see you soon. When you're the first outside interviewer, I said yes to. Oh, I'll see you. Oi, kapatid tayo, so hindi ako outside, you know. Hindi na nga, kaya nga pumayag na ako. Talk to you soon. God bless. I'll message you later. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Everyone looking forward to your next next interview too. Maraming salamat and God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ingat. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Buya kasha. That's it. Panasala sa mga nakita. So obviously, bago matapos ang Pride Month, grabe yung transitions natin na from from discussing ano Russian coup, ah Putin, ah and all of that. Biglang yun na balik tayo dun sa mga ibang bagay first this month is Pride Month and and patapos na yung Pride Month I want to make sure that we have one of the pioneers in the Philippine LGBTQ plus movement sa Pilipinas and I thought no one is better than Danton Remoto no one of the leading political activists in our country and looks like could be congressman soon you know if if he continues this so my best wishes to him I'm so happy that he's there So don't worry guys, we're hoping to have him doon naman sa studio natin for Real Talk. So please add mga kameta yung Real Talk natin on YouTube. Ipopost ko yan. We, we hope to have more of that conversation. Don't worry mga kameta, dito sa podcast natin tuloy-tuloy yung mga meta ko. Of course, limitado yung ano na, di, uh, medyo DIY lang tayo. Nandito tayo. But we have our studio version with Real Talk. I'm still gonna have my Nexus with, with Leloy here. And hopefully once Leloy, Claudio, and some of our friends are in town, we want to also have in-studio kind of podcast. And also please, please, Uh, continue to support us. I hope you appreciated the discussion. Namin. We we try to make it as uncontroversial, on you know what I'm saying, unbarred the gulan as possible. I'm so glad that uh, we had no one less than uh, Professor uh, Danton Remoto with us. So please check out uh, these the copy of this interview soon. Uh, hopefully on Spotify, uh, on YouTube, and here. Uh, Papa, you seen pa natin, palinisin pa natin, and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, uh, a studio interview with him also soon. Maram salamat, guys. Uh, talk to you soon. God bless and have a good day. Please also check yung, uh, yung analysis natin on Russia with the coup d'etat. I discuss all angles of that. What's reasonable, what's uh, impeccable, and what's what's inc- uh, you know incredulously uh, unbelievable. No, lahat yan pinag-usapan natin mga angles. And we look to do more and more of these live interviews. Uh, So not only podcasts, but also even analysis at the latest event. Maraming salamat guys, and please check also, at least you'll have the audio version of this listen from the very beginning. Sorry, medyo magulo ka na kasi low bat ako, huwag nyo napansin ninyo magulo dyan. Alright, talk to you soon. God bless.